<clears throat> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Our processional this morning is printed in the program, In His Temple Now Behold Him. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
Lord Jesus, open our eyes to your saving love. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, unstop our ears to hear your living word. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lift up your heads, O gates. 
Lift them high, O everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Since God's children share flesh and blood, Jesus himself likewise shared the same things, so that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by the fear of death. For it is clear that he did not come to help angels, but the descendants of Abraham. Therefore, he had to become like his brothers and sisters in every respect, so that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God, to make a sacrifice of atonement for the sins of the people. Because he himself was tested by what he suffered, he is able to help those who are being tested. The word of the Lord. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. This child is the light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Alleluia.
In the name of the living God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The presentation of our Lord Jesus Christ in the temple and the purification of the Blessed Virgin Mary, otherwise known as Candlemas. The Mass of Candles. Why the focus on candles? What, 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 what? The light of the world. The light of the world, close, yes. We need the heat. <laughs> <laughs> who, who said that? <laughs> so we heard in today's gospel that Simeon proclaims to Mary and Joseph that this child will be a light of revelation to the nations. This was focused on by the early church. Jesus being a light of revelation to the nations. This is something a little bit more expounded than the role of Israel, God's people. Jesus is taking it a step further, a light of revelation to the nations, not just for God's people Israel, but the nations shall know God through Jesus Christ became a focus of light. And of course, candles became a very symbolic reference to Jesus. And in medieval times, they had developed elaborate feasts, particularly in Britain, where you would have candles. And you would bring the, the candles to be used through the church year were blessed on this feast day. And then eventually the custom came to people would also bring candles from home. There might have been a little touch of, um, I don't know, what would you call it? Superstition associated with this? Maybe, maybe. I'm just going to say, put it out there. But it became a very embedded tradition in English spirituality. So I've said this time and time again, just to give you context. But what I want you to focus on today is the way the story is told through the Gospel. Mary and Joseph, Simeon and Anna, and of course the child Jesus are the central figures, the main actors, if we look at it as a stage production. And there are a few things that keep getting referenced as is customary, as prescribed in the Law of Moses. St. Luke, the evangelist, is telling a story and situating it in the rich tradition of Israel. This is not some fly-by-night operation. Jesus emerges from the rich tradition of the Jewish people. We may take that for granted. In fact, in our society, we may poo-poo pious customs and devotional practices. After all, many of us were raised or force-fed on a diet of forced piety. You will go to church, you will do this, and you will do that. You know, maybe. I didn't mind it so much. It meant time with Nan. But some people had a more negative experience. So there was a pushback in the wider society, even. You've got people that say, I don't need to go to church to know God. And you cannot dispute that. God created the whole world. And there is no aspect of this life, this earthly creation, that is separate from God. God can be found outside the church. Everyone with me? Yeah. And you've probably even heard the current expression, oh, I'm spiritual but not religious. Have you heard that one? And what do I say in return? Satan's a spirit, you've got to be more specific. <laughs> Religion, pious custom, devotional practice has got a bad rap these days. And yet, Mary and Joseph 
faithful Jews followed the customs of their religion. They brought Jesus to be circumcised. They brought him to be dedicated. Mary came for the purification. And last two weeks ago, we heard how Jesus came into his home synagogue in Nazareth, as was his custom, and opened the scroll of the prophet Isaiah to a specific spot. How did he know that? Because he knew it. He knew the scriptures. And we hear today in the gospel, at the very end, that Jesus grew in age, wisdom, and grace, and the favor of God was upon him. Did this all happen in a vacuum? Now, there are some people out there who run around with this docetic heresy, thinking Jesus popped out of Mary's womb, fully conscious of who he was. It's called a heresy. Now, Jesus didn't know the moment of his birth. As we hear in the letter of the he to the Hebrews this week, Jesus had to become like his brothers and sisters in the flesh, just like us. What does that mean, just like us? Jesus had to acquire knowledge the human way. How did that happen? Through those tedious customs. How did he get to know God? How was the Spirit awakened in him so he could fully understand who he was and what his mission was? Do you think, you know, Mary and Joseph dropped him off on the sit at the synagogue at, um, on Saturdays and said, we'll pick you up in an hour? Was that a bit snarky? Or do you think that God was centered to their life? I, I'm, betting, I'm betting it was. And that Jesus was raised with the customs that spoke to him on so many different levels. And he grew in age, wisdom, and grace. So, we are in a similar pattern. If we are also called to share the light of Christ with the world, how are we going to do that? Our relationship to God just doesn't fall ready-made from the sky, does it? We are probably all here today because we have been raised in the customs, in the piety of the community of faith. Jesus was raised in a community of faith. And it was in that context that he came to an awareness of who he was. I would contend that the same happens for us. We cannot expect, and we cannot expect of others, that they all of a sudden become disciples of Jesus with no knowledge of Jesus. It depends on that context, that community that needs attention. We take it for granted too often. And we take it for granted that the next generation is going to know. How is it going to be passed? How are we going to share that? In our daily life, Monday morning in the office cubicle, uh, I don't know how many people are back at work, but if Monday morning in the office cubicle, your coworker asks you, so what did you do Sunday morning? Are you going to say, I, have, I observed the pious customs of my faith? <laughs> Probably not. But you might have said I went to church. But how public are we? And how willing are we to share the faith that is within us so that others may see the light that was first shared with us? If we celebrate Jesus as a light of revelation to the Gentiles, and we do not share in that light, what's the point of celebrating? 
How is Jesus' light shed forth in the world today, if not through us? And it's not just by going to church. We know that the light of Christ shines forth in every dark corner of the world by anyone who has faith and courage to do so. And they may not be faithful in going to church. But there is that context of formation that we all benefit from. I am here because, yes, under duress, I was forced to go to church at several points in my life. Heavy dose of Irish guilt. And I am so thankful for that now. And if I'm thankful, then I wish I could share it. And I hope you're on board with that, wanting to share your faith, wanting to share the light of Christ that we celebrate today. Now, I know I've used this in a couple of other contexts, but I just love the way it sounds, so I'm going to say it again. There's a line from Torch Song Trilogy. Anyone see the movie? Harvey Firestein? And Anne Bancroft? Oh, I love Anne Bancroft. So they're having a knock and uh, mother and son fight. And Anne Bancroft's the mother. And she's, she's being yelled at by her son, Arnold. And she turns to, she turns to Arnold and says, You cut me out of your life? And then you blame me for not being there. No one saw this? <laughs> you mention it all the time. <laughs> you gotta see it. It's one of my favorite movies. Port Song Trilogy. You cut me out of your life and then you blame me for not being there. It was a cut to the chase for me as I had cut certain people out of my life. And I realized that if I ever expected them to be there for me, I needed to bring them back in. The same goes for God. If you put God on the sidelines today, maybe it's time to bring him in to the center. And we can always use a little nudge bringing God back into the center of our lives. Because at the end of our life, we don't want God saying to us, you cut me out of your life, and then you blame me for not being there. Using Anne Bancroft's voice is more effective. In any case, we are called to share the light of Christ to all people. That's our role as disciples. Let us not shirk from it. Amen. Amen. Let us stand and reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, the Savior of the Creator, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and it was in him. For our sake he was crucified and the conscious fire. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We 
So today we're celebrating the First Minds Mass, the first anniversary of Eddie and Trevor passing. And it is in the context of what I was preaching about, um, a good point to remember that Eddie, like Jesus, shared the light of God with those in his life. And the best memory of any loved one is keeping that light alive in all that he did and shared with you. And we can think of our loved ones in the same way. Jesus being the anchor, but all of those who helped us along the journey in our relationship with God by the light they shined on the path we are now called to equally shine light for others. Um, and so next week, we've got something coming up. What would that be? 
Valentine's sale. Hmm. Now, until I, until, until Carol started this Valentine's sale, I could never keep the date in, in my head because I'm not a romantic. But now it's forever. <laughs> um, so you must go out and buy Valentines for loved ones. They need not be romantic. And what opportunity do you have for the sweetheart's Valentine's Day sale? Now, and I think they, I, yes, I screwed up on this. On the announcement, it's what? The sweat arts? Oh, oh I know. I Every time I typed that, I thought, please don't let me type it sweat arts. <laughs> so you're not the first. At least it was in the ad correctly. In the printed ad, but not in the, not in the email ad I just sent out. Oh. Because I just copied and pasted this. And this is, I, I, because of my, I can't really type as well with my hand in the sling. So I said, Danny, do you have something you want to put in? He wrote it out. I said, why don't you sit down and type it? And of course, being the control queen that I am, I said, no, we don't use capitals. Let me redo this. <laughs> and so I redid it. And, he was helping me fold these last night. He goes, sweat hots, sweat hots. <laughs> so I own this. But so, if anybody is making things yeah. for the fair, we will be setting up on Friday evening, and it would be great if you could bring them then. Um, we do prepare things and like them to be ready to gift. So if you're making things, as Walter said before, make them pretty. And if you need help with that, Danny has pulled down all kinds of uh, wrappings and bags and ribbons and things that are over in the parish hall. So if you are making things and you don't have a way to package them up to look like Valentine's, feel free to come over to the parish hall right after the service and I'll be glad to go through what's available there with you. Um, notice, notice she didn't say she'd do it for you. <laughs> yeah, I've got enough of my own to do, thank you. <laughs> But um, I am also making lobster lunches. They are for pre-order only. They can be picked up anytime during the Valentine's sale. And you have Super Bowl Sunday the next day, and you have Valentine's Day the day after that. They make wonderful gifts. So um, please do contact me to order them by Wednesday. End of the day on Wednesday, so that I can So those order are pre-order. Uh, are the quiches for pre-order? No. Okay, I got a call from somebody who got them last year and wanted to pre-order them, and I said, I don't think so. But do we, can I tell her, call her back and tell her what kinds you're making? Sure, we're gonna do cheddar broccoli and ham and Swiss. And what? Ham and Swiss. Ham and Swiss, okay. No Fenway? No Fenway this time. And ham and Swiss and cheddar broccoli, okay. All right, I'll let her know. Thank you. Um, so that's next Saturday, and it doesn't require as much setup as some of the others, but anybody with free time it would be appreciated. So, again, if you're contributing, please bring it uh, over Friday night. And so that there's a push there if you're going to bake cookies or something. Right. Um, yeah, so the people watching this will be next Sunday, so don't bake cookies next Sunday. <laughs> We're a week off on the video. Um, so an update. Oh, in the fall, we were collecting for the Afghan refugees or evacuees, um, and our efforts were through the Cataluma Ref Refugee Ministries. And um, they were playing phone tag with a guy. So he finally sent me the, uh, their newsletter. And I printed out down the back. They asked, me not, they asked us not to share it electronically because it has pictures of children and families at risk. I know the percentage and the chance is so small that anyone could get a hold of that. But in any event, I've also shared a link through the email that I sent out. That doesn't have any detailed pictures, so 
that's fine. That, that's a local news article updating the community on what they're doing. He, he's got a couple of um, projects in the works. One of them that's ready to launch is there's a, a school, a college, I believe it's on the North Shore. It used to be a woman's college, now it's co-ed, but during COVID there is surplus dorm space. So they're gonna use some of that dorm space for the refugees. Uh, so a lot of this stuff what caught people off guard and uh, took a while to gear up to get anything in place. But they've got several things going, which is excellent. We, we contributed over $3,000 to them. Um, so that's wonderful news. And we've got the bishop coming. February 27th, we've got three confirmands that were supposed to be confirmed almost two years ago. And they're still willing to do it, so they haven't fled. So that'll be on the 27th. I'm re meeting with the bishop by Zoom to see how this is going to look strategically. I don't think that there's going to be a reception afterwards. And I believe that the bishop will be meeting with the vestry by Zoom on or before that day, probably afterwards. So, any other announcements? Yes? Um, <clears throat> I don't, probably the people from Sacred Ground are aware of Debbie Irving, who's a local author, and she wrote a book called uh, Waking Up Wife. Wonderful book. My agency is co-sponsoring a presentation uh, which is February 17th, I think it's from 7 to 9. It's a Zoom presentation. And so, <clears throat> if you're interested, I, the sponsorship comes with a number of, like, I can register a bunch of people to participate. I think it's called, I'm a good person, isn't that enough? So I encourage you um, to see me if you're interested. I so admire her writing, um, her humility, her openness to learning. If you want to meet, if you need to, if you are interested, please come see me. I will forward the link to you. Um, if you want to know more about her, you can come talk to us. You can talk to me, um, and I'm happy to give you information about her. It might be a good introduction. You know, some people don't like to read a whole book, but when they hear someone speak, they're like, I want to hear more. And I'm so excited to hear her. I love her book. Again, what struck, struck me is her, her humility, her willingness to say, oh, gee. You know, you know, connected with Walter's homily about you know you're you're not just done learning when you're out of school or even in church. There's a whole world out there, and we can learn from each other. So it's on Zoom, so you can be eating dinner, you know, <laughs> not even have your picture on there, and listen to what she has to say. And it's in the evening, so it doesn't interfere with anyone's work schedule. Is, it, is there any cost to that? I'm sorry? Is there any cost? No, if you see me, <laughs> oh, okay. I will give you a link that you're free. So because my agency is co-sponsoring it, they're giving me up to 75 slots for free, but I'm actually I'm talking to my board, my staff person, and anyone in my connections uh, work later or not who are interested. And what's the date again? I believe it's February 17th, which is Thursday, 7 to 9. P.M. P.M. Yes. Thank you. Any other announcements? Let your light so shine before others, that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father.
accept the offering of your church, and grant that Christ may shine in us to the praise and glory of your name. Amen. Amen. We offer our sacrifice of praise this day and thanksgiving for the life of Eddie Trevor. And our worship continues with Eucharistic Prayer B from Common Worship, as printed in your program. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and to praise. It is indeed right and good, always and everywhere, to give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ, who is one with you from all eternity. For on this day he appeared in the temple in substance of our flesh to come near to us in judgment. He searches the hearts of all your people and brings to light the image of your splendor. Your servant Simeon acclaimed him as the light to lighten the nations, while Anna spoke of him to all who looked for your redemption. Destined for the falling and rising of many, he was lifted high upon the cross, and a sword of sorrow pierced his mother's heart, when by his sacrifice he made our peace with you. And now we rejoice and glorify your name that we, too, have seen your salvation and join with angels and archangels in their unending hymn of praise. Christ has taught us, 
we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Hallelujah.
you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, the Son of God, born of Mary, fill you with his grace to trust his promises and obey his will. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Father, we have sung your praise with shepherds and angels. May Christ be born in our hearts today. Praise, Praise to Christ, Christ our Lord. We have shared in the joy of Simeon and Anna. Help us, like them, to trust your word. Praise, Praise to Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. We have greeted Jesus, the light of the world. May we be filled with light of your love. Praise, Praise to Christ, Christ our Lord. We stand near the place of new birth. Let us shine with the light of your love. We turn from the crib to the cross. Let us shine with the light of your love. We go to carry his light. Let us shine with the light of your love. Thanks be to God. Our recessional hymn this morning is number 436. Lift up your heads, ye mighty gates. 